Hey, Carl, good to talk to you. Thanks for taking my call, brother. Oh, it's my honor, Josh. Thanks for having me. Uh, to start off, can you introduce yourself and uh, just kind of talk a little bit about what you what you do, what your research has been involved in, where people might have heard your name before? Yeah, okay, thanks. Well, primarily, I'm a, a longtime pastor, senior pastor of a church on the Gulf Coast um, for our area, fairly large church. I've been the pastor for, at the time of, of us talking today, I've been the pastor there for going on 35 years. Um, prior to that, I spent 10 years, a little over 10 years, in Florida law enforcement officer, uh, as a Florida law enforcement officer. The bulk of that uh, 10 or 11 years was spent in two different sheriff's offices under three different sheriffs, patrol officer, criminal investigations, etc. So a lot of life experience. But in my experience in the ministry, um, I've done a lot of preaching and teaching, particularly on this topic we're, we're going to discuss today. And uh, I've written a lot to it in, in books uh, published by major Christian publishers, one of them in my most favorite, Defender Publishing, and um, uh, several books and a lot of research. And, and again, I mean, I, that doesn't make me the expert of all experts, but it, I, I do know what I'm talking about biblically, and um, I'm not pulling what I'm going to say. I'm not pulling it out of my back pocket. I mean, it, it comes from making scriptural connections and and uh, as well as scientific connections. So that's kind of my background into all of this. So thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So leaving aside the uh, UFO and alien abduction phenomena for the moment and just looking at the question, could life exist on other planets? Is there anything in the Bible that would preclude the possibility that there might be life somewhere uh, on other planets? Yeah. You know, the way you've asked it, is there anything in the Bible that could preclude the possibility? My answer is no. There's there's not, in my opinion. And um, I think I even quote uh, Dr. Michael Heiser and several others uh, who are more learned than I am who come to have come to the same conclusion, and that is this. Look, I think the Bible is earth and humanity central because that's probably the center of God's heart and his whole plan for the universe. But and 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 there doesn't seem to be a mention in the scriptures of what we would think of as human life on another planet that needs to be redeemed, and Jesus had to go to different planets and die on a cross and rise from the dead. There doesn't seem to be anything that says that. But in the broader scope of the thing, you and I both know because this is a a great um, uh, uh, thrill of scripture to you and I both, and that is we know that there are. I mean, scientifically speaking, multiverses, multiple dimensions. And the Bible tells us that. I mean, it tells us there's heaven, there's hell, there's paradise, there's the eternity, there's, you know, there's there's the chasm between paradise and prison, the holding place for the, I mean, and all of these things are just said. And, and we see angels coming and going from different dimensions. I mean, when Abraham said he looked up and saw three men coming, well, then we find out later it's two angels and the Lord himself. Well, so the question is, where'd they come from? Did they live up in the mountains? I mean, does God secretly live in a cave somewhere and he just comes down every now and then and shows us himself? Or did he drop down out of the sky? Or did Abraham see a UFO land and they all got out? No, they, they're walking through portals. They're coming through dimensions. And, and, and now with the study of quantum mechanics and quantum physics and quantum science, we understand that, that this is so. Now, having said all of that, that then leaves open the possibility that God has done other things in other dimensions. That's none of our business right now. And so I am not going to say, as Dr. Heiser would say, I'm not going to say what God can't do or hasn't done. So anyway, if you just go strictly by the scriptures and that's all you knew, and if you didn't know anything about multiple dimensions of reality— other than what the Bible said, you know, we might be able to make a hardcore statement and say, no, there's nothing else besides us. Um, but that's, uh, I, I, I'm not prepared to say that. And, and I think if, if we discovered human-like life on other planets, I mean, physically and literally, I'm not talking about demonic deception and all that. We're going to get to that. But if we discovered that somehow and God allowed us to, or even if we get to glory and the Lord says, now let me show you what all I've done all over the place and all through all the dimensions, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Because is God able to do that? Yes. But anyway, that's a long answer to a short question. But I know that's a, a lot of people ask that question, so I wanted to be thorough. Oh, that's a great answer. Yeah, definitely.
So talking about the alien abduction phenomena, what do you make of that? Is this, uh, is this demon attacks? Is this hallucinations? Are these actual aliens uh, abducting people? What do you make of the whole alien abduction phenomena? Okay, yes, yes, and no. Um, I think some of it's delusion, you know. I mean, it just has to be. I mean, humans are very complex, and we're in a fallen world, and out of the billions and billions of us, bless their hearts, there are people that are delusional. And, you know, and other people seeking some kind of attention and other people that are on drugs. And, I, you know, we, we know that. So leave that category out. When we get down to the double or triple handfuls of what seem to be real, real brain twisters, like, you know, all the tests you can run on these people are, are have been run and they seem to be sane and rational people. And they take lie detector tests and they're put under hypnosis and, and they keep coming up with the same stories. I mean, that that gets a little freakier to people. So, so let's just pretend like, uh, for the sake of this conversation, that those are absolutely real and that experience actually happened to these people. So then, what's the explanation? And I think, I think, and we'll get into this much deeper. I think it's demonic. I, I truly do not think it's actual physical humanoid type beings from other planets that have the have developed the technology and the curiosity uh, to be so far more more advanced than we are to come to us for the sole purpose of trashing the gospel of Jesus Christ and examining us sexually and messing with our minds and terrifying us i i can't even imagine that in a culture that advanced that that would be that would be what they're up to see that sounds more like demonic activity um, but anyway, so so that's my answer. I, I think s some of these experiences are real. Look, it's like people that, that get involved, they get sucked into the occult or witchcraft or seances, and they come out of them scared to death saying, I promise you, I saw an entity, a being, and it was my great, great granddaddy, and I know, and I saw, you know. Well, but the Bible has an answer for that. Y you're watching demons posing you know, they're posers, uh, you're, they're, mi they're mimicking, they're masquerading, even Saint jo ain't, uh, Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Um, in fact, I discussed this in one of my books I've written with Defender called Masquerade. Uh, so, so I think some of these experiences have proven to be as real as we can measure them to be real, but what does does that mean? And what I'm saying is I think more than likely, biblically speaking and even scientifically speaking now, more than likely we are we are dealing with interdimensional experiences of some kind of an entity, and I would say an evil entity, and I would say that would be demonic. You see, the Bible, people ask me all the time, do I believe there's other life out there in the universe? My answer is absolutely, and people freak out. Really? You're a preacher. You believe in aliens and little green men from other planets? And I say, well, you didn't ask me that. You asked me if I believed in life out there in the universe. The Bible tells us there's the angelic realm, there's the demonic realm, there's power behind it. Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. Um, there's technology behind it. Again, prince of the power of the air. And in the last days, you know, uh, just all kinds of signs and wonders and fire will be called down from the heavens and there will be signs in the heavens. You know, something's going to happen. Jesus said people will faint with, well, that's the King James. They will die with heart attacks um, when they see the terror that's coming upon the earth. Uh, that that even the elect could be deceived in the last days. See, there's some kind of terrible, terror-invoking deception that is demonic. The Bible says that, that's coming in the last days. I think those kinds of verses studied in their context probably well, well, may point to some type of a UFO disclosure. Uh, as with it... Somehow this UFO phenomena, I believe, has to be involved in the last day's deception because it's so ubiquitous throughout ancient history right up to modern day times. Our military is talking about it now. Our government's talking about it. Other militaries and other governments of the world are talking about it and revealing videos now in this age of video technology wonder. Uh, it, 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 how could it not be? I mean, it, it, if it's not humanoid beings from other planets, then it's demonic. 
And a lot of ufologists who have spent decades believing that it was humanoid uh, beings from other planets have now backed way off of that and have gone on public record, as you know, um, saying, no, no, after all these years, we we believe these are entities that have always been among us, always been here, probably interdimensional. They are probably malev malevolent. They have nothing good designed, and several of them, them who I don't think are even believers from after reading their biographies, say these this phenomena we now believe is more in line with what the Christians would call demonic activity. Mm. So I think that's what we're dealing with, brother. I mean, you know, again, what, what I only know what I know, and everything I know that the Scripture says and what modern science says, and then these people that have devoted their lives to studying this matter have said recently in writing and on film, um, I, I think we're dealing with interdimensional entities that mean no good to us. And the Bible would describe that as demonic activity. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I, I can totally see how this is, whatever's going on, it's definitely harmful uh, for humans. Speaking of which, do you believe, uh, some people talk about an alien breeding program. Uh, do you see anything about that in the Bible? Do you believe that accounts of that are true? Or is this something else that may have been um, misinterpreted? Uh, yes and no. Now, I'm going to define that so you don't think I'm walking the fence. But no, I don't see anything in the Bible that in those words, black and white speaks of that in the last days. However... There is a huge connection, and this gets a little complex, but I'm going to make it simple. I've spoken to it in several of my books in great detail, referencing scholars and scientists. So again, all of us scholars and scientists and authors can be wrong. So I'm not saying that just because I have a lot of references behind me that I'm 100% right. But I'm saying to your audience here and to the viewers that I'm not pulling this out of my back pocket. Okay, so... No, the Bible doesn't say in the last days there will be aliens that will, breeding with, will be breeding with humans. But here's what Jesus said about the last days. It will be just like the days of Noah and just like the days of Lot. In Luke 17, he includes both of those. In Matthew 24, he says like the days of Noah, and he punctuates both of them. Um, and both times, Luke 17 and Matthew 24, he's speaking to totally different audiences, four or five months apart in different locations of the Roman Empire. So this was a, a big deal. I mean, Jesus gave us a huge clue about almost not a timeline, but a but a graphical, a, a graphic kind of chronology of the kinds of things that would happen and about when they would happen. How, how, say, Carl, how can you know that? Because Jesus said it would be sort of like, kind of like Noah. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> he said it'll be a, a metaphor of it will be Noah. No, he didn't say that. He said it will be just like the days of Noah. Now, in reference to your question, so we go back and we read about the days of Noah. And don't and, and I don't just go to chapter 6 through 11 of Genesis, because Noah's mentioned in several more places in the Old Testament. He's mentioned throughout the New Testament. He's mentioned in Matthew 24. He's mentioned in Luke 17. And he's mentioned in several other places in the gospel. He's also mentioned by Peter. He's mentioned by the writer of Hebrews. Um, I mean, so when you pull it all together, we start with that scary little verse in Genesis 6 that said, and in those days, what days? The days of Noah. The sons of God came unto the daughters of men. Now, this could be a four-hour teaching, and I've written several books. Dr. Michael Heiser is the king of all of this. He's written several books, um, uh, The Unseen Realm being, I guess, his masterpiece on this. But that term, as most of your audience probably will know, it, 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 it comes from the Hebrew phrase, B'nai Elohim, the sons of God. And, it, and that specific phrase is only used five or six times in the Old Testament. There are other phrases that are similar to it. And in English, when you're trying to translate from ancient Hebrew, sometimes the translations aren't that great. But every time that exact phrase is used, it is interpreted in every English translation as divine beings or angels, except in Genesis 6, where that same phrase is used, but almost 
every scholarly translation translates it literally. When the sons of God, they don't say when the angels from another realm came unto the daughters of or when divine beings entered in through a wormhole from another realm and came unto the, it just says the sons of God. Because what it is, it's so freaky to our mind because now it involves potential sexual involvement, you know, and 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 there would go to the breeding thing. Or, or at to the very least, I write in my in my uh, research of this. At the very least, I think it means that there was something. I'm just going to use this word. It's a modern word. Something technological going on. There was some. Well, what what do we find in the UFO captivity uh, phenomena? They, you know, they say, well, I was probed and prodded, and my sexual organs were examined, and my, you know, and they scoped up into me, you know, and and and, and examined the womb and the uterus and the birth canal, and I mean, you'll hear these these things, and so I can kind of envision that Satan and the demonic realm that was in the process of this whole fall in creation since the garden, there was something about the birth process and the womb and the, and the ability that humans have to create themselves that God gave to us like a Xerox machine. We can just, we can zoom off copies of ourselves. And, and um, so there was some kind of curiosity, maybe even some kind of ability will say, well, angels can't have sex with, with humans. Well, actually, the Bible doesn't clearly say that, either in the Hebrew or the Greek. Some will refer to Jesus where it says, well, in heaven, they're neither given or taken in marriage like they are. But, but that says nothing about reproduction. It, it, it really doesn't. He's just talking about the institution of marriage as we know it and the necessity for marriage as we know it in a world that's perfect and not fallen. None of that will be a necessity is what Jesus is saying. He's telling the Pharisees, you're thinking of it all wrong. You're thinking of it strictly earthly. But when we are in, when we are in glory, it's not just another form of earth. It's a glorified everything. No more sin, no more death, no more pain, no more death, you know, all these things. So when we get back to the Genesis account, we run into this thing that was either one of two things by, by the wording there. It says, because then they came unto them and had children by them. Well, in the most normal use of the Hebrew language and the English language, that would mean like we know it in our mind of producing children. But could it have been techno technological? I mean, we think we invented test tube babies and and uh, and, and, and CRISPR-Cas9 technologies and, you know, and genetic editing. I don't think that the demonic realm has ever looked at the, these kinds of things and says, gee, we didn't know that could be done. I can't believe these humans figured something like that. No, I think this knowledge has been around the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> there's, good, there's good things from CRISPR-Cas9 and genetic editing and mRNA uh, research, but there's evil that can be attached to it as well. And you remember what was Satan's temptation to Adam and Eve? You can be like us, us who, the angelic realm, the, the sons of God, you can be like us. And what some translation says, you can be like God, and that's because the word Elohim, it could be either the multiplicity of the angelic realm or God himself, the creator of all, and it just depends upon the context. But in either way, Satan is saying, you can know all the stuff we know, all the stuff, about creation and everything, if you will sit down at my feet and let me eat of the fruit I will bring to you. So it's got to be, Josh, and, and then we get to Peter and Jude in the New Testament, and we read very clearly about some class of divine beings that are now being held in the deepest dungeons of the prison of of, of Hades, hell, uh, prison, waiting for the great judgment of the last days. And, and, and both of those cases in Jude and Peter, it, it, it extrapolates back with imagery of the days of Noah and, and the flood and Sodom and Gomorrah kind of activity. I mean, it says that. So that seems to connect directly with that thing that happened in, in the days of Noah in Genesis 6. So, so the point is, that's a, I told you this was complex, but I'm, I, I, don't, you know, I could just say yes or no to your question and we move on, and then people would be divided and freaked out. So I'm trying to give some uh, contextual foundation, scientific and biblical. So I know that the concept of, of alien human breeding 
is huge on the internet. And some would have us to believe that about half of the 8 billion people on the planet are, are, are hybrids. Um, and that may be, uh, but I, I, you hear Jesus say it's going to be just like the days of Noah. So what does that mean? It means it almost has to mean, in my humble opinion, I could be wrong, but it almost has to mean that either there is some kind of literal, physical, in the last days, some of that demonic presence is going to be released. And you, and you read in the book of Revelation about the chasm coming open and the demonic powers coming out. You read about the demonic that will lead the kings of the earth astray. I mean, that's in the re book of Revelation. You p hear Paul talk about in the last days, doctrines of demons will flood the earth. And that word doctrine doesn't just apply to biblical teaching. It applies to teaching of facts and truth and knowledge. So facts and truth and knowledge of demons will flood the earth in the last days. So it's got to mean when Jesus said it'll be just like, and those are his words, not my words. Just like means just like. It's got to mean that Genesis 6 is included, which has got to mean one of two things, in my opinion. Either there's some kind of demonic outpouring wherein these angels that have been held in captivity, see, I, it, you, can all the angelic realm procreate with humans if that was ever possible in the beginning? I, the Bible doesn't tell us. But if they could, and if that's what Peter and Jude are talking about, there was at least a class that could. There was some type. So there's either going to be that happening again in the last days, because Jesus said it'd be just like, or, and, or, and, or, it will be attached to some kind of technology wherein, watch this, all flesh becomes corrupted again. That's what happened in Noah's day. And brother, we're the first generation since the days of Noah to see it happening again right before our eyes. MRA, mRNA technology has the ability to deliver complete corruption of flesh. In fact, the chief medical officer of Moderna, he's on a TED Talks video as we speak. Uh, I, I've heard him say, we are rewriting the code of life. We are, we are feeding new information as your, your, your genome is like an operating system. He means like a computer. We're feeding it lines of code. We're switching off switches and switching on other switches. It's, it's astounding. And this has only happened in the last 10 years, that. And then prior to that, CRISPR-Cas9, the ability to cut and snip biologically the genome and recreate things and using that to, to, to grow human livers inside of a pig, you know, they think, and things like that. Brother, that's what Jesus said. So, so alien and human breeding, maybe, it, it, and, and if that interpretation is proper from Genesis 6 and Peter and Jude, and that somehow that happened and God said, you've stepped way over the line, and he put them until the last days, that seems to be the inference. And then in the last days, there's an outpouring. Well, then that could happen, I guess. Um, now, there are people that I know that I think probably came from aliens. I'm being funny. You, you know, I mean, listen, the human race is, 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 is amazing because there's all colors, there's all shapes and sizes, yet you cut us open and we're human. We're human, you know? But... Uh, so it would be easy, if this is happening, for the demonic to hide that within 8 billion people all over the planet. And there's still places on our planet where really no human foot has ever set foot. Oh, now we have satellites, and we, you know, but still we haven't gotten down and put our feet on the soil in many, 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 many millions of miles of territory all, all over the surface of this globe. It would be fairly easy for the demonic to hide that kind of process, if that's what's happening. But I say this, regardless, I mean, there may be people listening saying, oh, you're both nuts. That, that's crazy. That's just pure science fiction. Well, just remember, almost everything we're living with today was pure science fiction 20 years ago, the Internet included, cell phones and CRISPR-Cas9 and mRNA and, and everything. It was, it was all science fiction just 20, 25 years ago. But it's not now. We're living it. So, so I would be careful to dismiss it as just pure science fiction simply because your mind wants to shut down on it. 
And I would say that at the very least, though, there's some kind of demonic infusion of technological knowledge in the last days that's going to do some corrupting of flesh, animal and human. And when you think about this, my friend, I, I, when I draw people's attention to this, it usually snaps something in their, in their brain. A light bulb comes on. Think of when God leveled his curses upon Adam and Eve and Satan. He leveled a curse upon Eve and the birthing process. And Satan's curse was pretty close to it. He said, your curse is from the womb of a woman, the birthing process will come a seed, a child. God's saying, I'm going to use a child to defeat your kingdom. And he's going to come from the womb of a woman. And it's going to be directed by heaven's throne, and he will crush your head. And I want to add these words. The same kind of junk you were trying to pervert, I'm going to use it to destroy you. I mean, I, I, that's what I see. Now, again, that's just my speculation. That's not the Word of God. But everything I said prior to my speculation is in the Word of God. So I think it all goes to the question you asked. I'm sorry I took so long to answer it, but, but this is one of those questions that's near and dear to me. People ask me all the time. And, and, and to me, it demands a little bit of a biblical foundation and scientific foundation to, to wrap people's heads around it. So in your opinion, what exactly are UFOs? Okay. Well, you know, science has spoken to this. You've asked my opinion, but science has spoken. And, and of course, you can take UFO only means, as you know, and your audience knows, something that's flying in the air that's unidentifiable at the moment. Well, you know, there's been a lot of ex explanations, and some of those explanations have turned out to be true. It's a military aircraft. It's technology that's being worked on. It's just something you thought you saw that you didn't. Maybe it was just a jet airplane. The sun caught it just right and kind of eliminated the wings, and it looked like a sliver going through the air, and it, that was actually an, an airline or, you know, swamp gas and all this stuff. And believe it or not, there, some of that has panned out that that's exactly what it was. But we're still left with what a lot of experts now call our UFOs you know, residual UFOs, meaning all of that that's left over from everything we've been able to explain and verify. Uh, not just explain away, but explain, okay? So now we're left with the residuals. Well, I can give you, we can talk about examples in our lifetime as we're doing this show. Um, residual UFOs are those that the U.S. Navy can't figure out, and they've got them on video, okay? That's residual. Why? Well, because the number one superpower in the world with arguably the best technology in the world. There are a few others that have technology approaching ours, but there's still a lot of it they've stolen from us, you know, China and Russia, uh, it, you know, and they could have some more advanced stuff than we do. But, but the most technologically advanced society that the planet has ever seen looks at these things, they try to track them, they try to chase them, they try to keep up with them. Not only can they not, but they're being described as objects of flight. They don't know what they are, so those are UFOs, that are defying the laws of earthly physics. Now, scientists describe it that way. Pilots, Air Force pilots, Navy pilots describe it that way. Um, uh, uh, ufologists are describing it that way. Um, experts in physics and scientists are looking at this stuff and they're saying there's nothing on earth that can do that. Yet there it is. You can see it. You can hear the guys live talking over their radios, freaking out. I mean, you know, people say, well, it was all staged. Well, that's pretty elaborate staging. And I guess it could have been, but for, just take it at face value. When you pull all this stuff together, those are what we would refer to as UFOs, that is, are UFOs, residual. That's, that's not swamp gas. It's not an airliner with the sun shining on it in a, in a, at an angle. And, and is documented, and, you know, I think, I don't think I'm stretching this by saying thousands of hours of this documentation over the last several decades this has been going on, which also precludes it from being, or excludes, excuse me, from being um, – just simple, some kind of technology we're working on. You know, people thought that, well, that's DARPA stuff. We're just not allowed to know. Well, DARPA's got some stuff that, you know, we're not allowed to know. But, but, but the problem is these kinds of videos and or sightings have been going on from military personnel 
for decades. And we didn't have anything that even approached that technology in decades ago. Nobody on the planet did. Now, even decades later in our time, we still don't have anything that approaches it, even though we could envision that maybe DARPA or something like that is getting close to something like this. But I mean, we're talking about spacecraft they saw or craft, unidentified craft they saw that was just zipping along near the surface of the o ocean and then instantly went straight up be out of the atmosphere and then back down, then went under the water in some cases, and then re-emerged and all at the speed of whatever. I don't know. They couldn't keep up with it. They said it was unearthly. It was inhuman, but yet it was obviously guided by intelligence. So that's that's what UFO means. And, and that's the kind of stuff we're interested in. Where is that coming from? What intelligence is behind it? Is it really beings from other planets that are so technologically advanced that they're down here showing off. Speaking of which, and it goes straight to your question again, but a lot of these ufologists that I have documented in my books, pointing behind me because they're on the shelf behind me, I have documented in my books, have actually and literally said that now they've come to the conclusion these are not humanoid kind of beings from other planets that are just more advanced than we are. These are interdimensional entities, they call them. And several of them have said, and they're showing off. They want us to see them. They want us to know, and this sounds like a horror movie, they're here. Um, and I think this ties into the last days, and we'll talk about that more in a moment in prophecy. I, I truly do. It, and I think the scripture speaks to it metaphorically, giving us foreshadowing of this kind of thing. Um, it could be wrong, but we'll talk about that. But um, so anyway, that's that's what we're talking about when we say UFOs and that phenomena is real. It's captured on film now by credible people with many, many, many other credible people, scientists, etc. Uh, looking at it, people that deal in technology and they're bum puzzled by it from all the reports that have been released to us. Yeah, speaking of uh, these films and things that keep getting released, um, is there actual, I mean, I guess that would count as physical evidence because it's a, a, a video and, you know, of course, videos can be faked or, you know, whatever. There's there's yes. always that. But is there physical evidence to show that there is something physical going on here? And if yes. so, what do we say uh, to Christians or, or to anybody who says, well, there's no physical evidence to this phenomenon yeah. whatsoever? That's just an untrue statement. Yes, there is physical evidence. And as you said, the videos, huge physical evidence. I witness from multiplicity of pilots seeing and tracking it at the same time, recording it. But as you said, I wrote about this in Masquerade, I believe, and I quoted Dr. Michael Heiser, and he quotes others and has a whole resource. And, and, and I used all of those and kind of conglomerated them together and put them in my book to quickly, in my book, quickly answer that question, because it's a good question, and people ask that. But the answer is a resounding yes. There is physical evidence. It's been collected down through the years, or somebody would say a spacecraft landed somewhere, and then they would go back and check, and sure enough, you know, there was burnt up grass and or, or whatever radi radioactive material in the ground and you know and these kinds of things are recorded now and people would say well well the demonic can't do that what do you mean can't the demonic can do anything that has to do with technology uh you know the demonic can't create something out of nothing like god can they can't create life out of nothing they can manipulate what's already there like we can we can take a genome here and a genome there and do some CRISPR-Cas9 and all that. But where did the genome come from? Where did the DNA come from? Where did the whole, how does the DNA, how does protein molecules know how to communicate to create a human being? That's that intelligence behind it all, you see. And so, so you know, when, 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 you're, when you're dealing with, with this phenomena of physical evidence, yeah, there's a lot of it. Um, at least enough, you know, we don't have like, truckloads and truckloads of it, but there's enough of it from around the world over time to say, yeah, this, this is not just psychological stuff or I saw something in there and my eyes fooled me. No, we've captured it on video. No, we've gone to some of these spots and, and recorded radiation and saw imprints in the ground. And people say, well, why would the demonic do that? To announce they're here, to deceive us, to masquerade as little green men from other planets. 
See, that's the perfect way. I mean, if I'm Satan and 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 I want to get the whole world, we already know the whole world is manipulated most by fear. Fear. Now, love overcomes fear, and love only comes from the heart of God, but most of the planet does not have a heart for Jesus Christ and the Word of God and God. So they're motivated by fear. We see that in the pandemics and, you know, and, and the closing down of everything overnight. Fear, fear, we're all going to die, fear. Well, Satan knows this. He's watching this. He's watching even the church's reaction to all of this right now. And, and so if you can imagine that... Um, bringing something like this to the planet and then like a a criminal who's trying to mislead would lead behind DNA evidence or would put a gun there, but it wasn't the gun used or they would wipe the fingerprints off or whatever. You know, they would leave physical evidence maybe on purpose to mislead or to misdirect the investigators. Well, if we humans can be that evil and conniving, how much more the demonic realm? How much more the demonic realm? That's where humans learn their evil from. If they're not saved, they learn it from Satan whispering in their ear and from demonic manipulation. So, so yeah, I, there is physical evidence. It has been recorded in various ways. And my explanation for it is, why would, why would they do that? I just gave it. I, because it's a deception. It's a masquerade. We're being groomed. We're being set up for that thing that Jesus spoke of. And I don't know when Jesus said this, he was talking about UFOs. But when he said there's going to come a deception, guys, in the last days, that could even fool the very elect if that were possible. And people will die from heart attacks when they see the terror that's coming upon the world. You know, I mean, listen to the language. So let me give an example. I, I, whenever I talk about this, I, I use this example. Think of what if the Lord was going to come this week in his kingdom glory. Um, but, uh, well, let's say a few months from now, but Satan knew it. And so he had to try to pull off his last great deception. And Satan knows his time is short, by the way. Revelation 12, 12 says that. He's filled with rage and you can see it all over the planet. He knows, he knows it's coming. So to try to hold on to it, he's got to create this global fear and panic to cause everybody to bow down to his man, to whom he's going to give supernatural powers to call fire from heaven, to deceive images that will move and talk. I mean, it's all in the book of Revelation. What does that mean? We don't know yet, but in our minds, this is the point I'm getting to, in our modern minds in this day and time, if the world is allowed to go on for hundreds of more years, we can't even imagine the technology that's coming. Just like 20 years ago, we couldn't imagine the technology we're using right now. Okay. So, but if it's not allowed to go on for hundreds of more years, let's say this is it. This is kind of the apex of the technology. Then in our life, if Satan is going to deceive the whole world, now watch this, Josh. Even the very elect, and all that word means is people like you and me, the word elect doesn't mean perfect. It just means we are believers in the word of God. We, we believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He's the coming king. We're filled with the Holy Spirit who leads us into all wisdom and knowledge, who takes away fear. God has not given us this spirit of fear. He's given us the Holy Spirit. Okay, we're the elect. But Jesus said, but even Josh and Carl, if they're there during that time, could be deceived, if that were possible. Now, when he puts that qualifier there, here's how I interpret it. It's highly possible that Josh and Carl will be deceived for just a little bit, but it's not possible for them to stay deceived because they have the spirit of truth in them. But this thing that's coming is so big that people are going to die when they see it. They're going to have heart attacks. Um, and even God's people like Josh and Carl will be protected from that, but for a minute, we might just be startled out of our pants. And then we say, wait, wait, wait. And the Holy Spirit says and to us, and then we begin to say, this is what Jesus was talking about. Okay, what could that be? Now, here's my question. Here's the million-dollar question. In the world we live in, brother, it's going to take a lot to fool Josh and Carl. 
you, you know, I'm not saying we're the most brilliant people in the world, but but think of all the technology we already know about. I mean, holographic images we can project in the sky. I mean, you know, all of the technology we have. What's it going to take to make Josh and Carl come right up next to a heart attack if we see it? Or, or to almost question our faith for a little bit if we see it? What would it take? The only thing at this point in human history that I could imagine would be something like, envision this scenario. I know this is going to sound science fiction. It sounds like a movie, but watch. What if you and I, right now, we concluded this interview, both of us walked outside. You're in one part of the United States. I'm in another part. We walked outside. We looked up in the sky, and it was filled with spacecraft that were like four and five football field lengths. I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of them hovering over the earth. People would be screaming. I mean, sirens going off. All militaries of the world would be called to action. I mean, can, can you imagine? Uh, there would be people dying of heart attacks. Nobody would stop and say, oh, that's a hologram. But it's all over the world. Um, you and I both would be startled. Maybe even, I'm going to go ahead and admit, I'm a pretty brave guy. I was a cop for years. I've been shot at and shot at people. But I'd be scared for a little bit. If I walked out and saw that, I'd be more than startled. But I don't think it would be long before the Holy Spirit of God would begin to minister to my heart, and I would begin to say, oh, my gosh, it's here. This is it. This is the great deception. So that's just one scenario, and I'm just pulling this out of my head and out of my back pocket. But, but it's connected to Scripture utterances from Jesus and from the Old Testament and from the New Testament about the last days. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something else I've written about that fits to this, brother. And, and again, it's a biblical speculation, but I went back. Even some of the classic scholars saw this possibility and wrote about it with the best language they had. It's in my book, Masquerade. Remember when Jesus is asked about the last days, and in Matthew 24, he's going through this litany. And one of the things he says, he says, let me tell you something else that's going to happen. And I'm going to, I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, but you put it in modern English. He said, all over the earth— they're going to be false messiahs. And there's going to be false prophets that are going to be coming, talking about these false messiahs coming. And they're going to say, look, they're out in the, he's out in the desert. No, they're over here. They're on the Temple Mount. No, they're over here. No, they're in the seat of power over here. He says, no, no, no. He says, when the true messiah comes, the Son of Man, it will be like lightning from the east to the west. You won't be able to miss it. Now, I did some deep search into those words, and I've got this study in the book of Masquerade, and then I went back to some of the classical scholars, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, just to see any inkling. I actually ran across several that said he is not talking about the false prophets and messiahs that we would think of now. He's talking about something in the last days that we cannot even yet imagine that has to do with entities, one guy said to entities, masquerading, and that's why I put it in my book, because they use the word, the title of my book, masquerading as messiahs and saviors to the world. And they will first be announced by people saying that they are coming. I mean, I, they actually said this a couple of hundred years ago. And they didn't say UFOs or aliens. They were just talking about this. And I thought, oh my gosh, the prophecies are already going all. I mean, people write about it. The movies are prophesying it. Video games are prophesying it. You know, the, the, you, you know, the zombie apocalypse and the UFO invasions. There's a new one out right now as we're speaking. I forgot it's called uh, the, uh, oh, the end of the time or the last war. I think it's called the last war or something like that. Tomorrow That's what war, it's, yeah. Yeah, tomorrow war. Yeah, it's all about, you know, this invasion of UFOs and everything, and, and they're prophesying, and what if that's their purpose, as these UFOlogists who have been studying this for decades are now saying, they, they want us to see them. They are preparing us for something. What do you think their message is going to be? We are your savior. We're going to keep you guys from killing each other in this nuclear war you almost started. Bow down, worship us, you're... We are the reasons you're here in the first place. We created you, or we, whatever. We are your savior. 
You don't believe it? Let me show you some signs and wonders. Revelation says that that whole system of the Antichrist and the beast system will be empowered by the dragon, who is Satan. He will give them his power. Well, what's his power? He's the prince of the power of the air. You understand? So when you tie those things together, again, I'm not dogmatic, because there's no place in the Bible that says these words. In the last days, UFOs are going to come down out of this air. They're going to land, and these people are going to get out, these human-like things, and they're going to claim to be the saviors of the world. No place says that. But when you take all that we know from science, all that we know from physical evidence, all that's happened in our lifetime, all that we know from scientific manipulation, all that we know about ubiquitous global evil, all that we know about what Jesus said, people dying that is so terrifying um you know people being even god's people could be deceived if that were possible um when you take all of that and cram it together and then you look at what the movies and movies i mean listen I, i'm not speaking about individuals but hollywood as a whole and everything that has spawned off of it you know different different movie making projects back in hitler's day they realized propaganda man propaganda we, we can tell people what we're going to do and get them prepared for it so when it happens, they won't freak out so much, but yet we can still do it to them. That's what that was all about. Hollywood has seized upon that. How many times you know you can get on the Internet and find these videos that are made about a movie is made that says certain things, and then 30 years later, it happens to the letter. And people are freaking out. So how did they know that? Well, I think they either set it up and then did it, self-fulfilling prophecy, or it was demonic knowledge that was infused into the hearts and minds and imaginations of the creators of those films. So if that's tr true, then if these false messiahs being spoken of by false prophets Jesus talked about in Matthew 24 um, happen to be those that, that manifest themselves in the last days that come through these demonic wormholes and portals, the the words wormhole and portal are not in the Bible, but different dimensions are, and, and and excursions and encroachments from those dimensions that's mentioned in the Bible. I mean, this might be what we're being set up for, which is why you're examining this. It's amazing to think about that we could be headed towards that day now. And, and what's really strange is that we today are living in a day where the government is actually openly admitting to having some knowledge and even being uh, involved in some research having to do with this UFO phenomenon. I, I can't even believe that we're living in that day today, but we're here.